In this video, we're going to be talking about work. Work is measured in joules, and our formula for work is Fs cos theta, where F is force that is applied at an angle to the horizontal, and S is the displacement. So suppose you have a box that you'd like to drag along uh, a distance or displacement of S, and if you apply a force at an angle like that, then we are supposed to resolve for the vertical and horizontal components of force. And it is the force that is parallel to the displacement uh, that is responsible for doing uh, work. So that is your angle theta. So if you drag it along for a distance of S, uh, we are supposed to resolve for the horizontal and vertical component. And here we are interested in the horizontal component f cos theta because it is the one that is parallel to to the displacement s so this is where we get uh, our formula for work done which says f cos theta which is the force that is parallel to the displacement times the displacement uh, so you know that work done is going to force times distance so this is exactly what we're doing by saying f cos theta times s so this is where we get that formula so if the force is parallel with displacement, uh, the angle between them is zero degrees Celsius and cos zero is equal to one. Therefore, in that case, we simply say our force times the displacement. So if there's no angle, you just say force times distance and you you use your value for F times the displacement and you get the work done. Uh, it is important to take note that if the force is perpendicular with displacement, if the force is perpendicular with displacement, the angle between them is 90 and cos 90 is zero. Therefore, F cos theta becomes zero. Um, we would say the force does not work on the object. So if a force is acting perpendicular to the direction of displacement, then it's doing no work. This is similar to what we came across in a projectile motion, where you have your horizontal component of uh, velocity remaining constant throughout uh, the parabolic motion because really the force that is acting on the object would be the force of gravity and it acts perpendicular to the direction of displacement when you're looking at horizontal displacement. So this is a similar situation that we have here. Uh, no work is done. So let's move on. Also, you should know that if uh, the force is acting in opposite direction uh, it can be parallel but acting in opposite uh, direction with uh, our displacement then it's going to do negative work it's going to do negative work your value for work is going to be negative so this is important so the direction of displacement and the direction of force is very important uh, so we can uh, talk about the work done on the object by specific forces or the total work done on the object so we can look at individual uh, forces and how much work they do, or we can just look at the overall work done that is done on the object. So there are two ways to find out total work. You can add the work done by every force on the object, or you can use the net force on the object as F in our formula, W is equal to Fs cos theta. So let's see how you can use each and every one of those methods. So let's suppose you'd like to move uh, a box for five meters as shown there. And those are the forces that are acting on the object. So you have your force, which is parallel to uh, displacement, written the eight newtons. Uh, and it's also acting in the direction of uh, your displacement. However, you also have another force, three newton, that is acting in the opposite direction. And you also have a, a, a force, a vertical force, 10 newtons, and a downward force there of 10 newtons. And uh, you should remember here that we said, uh, if you look at that force, it's uh, perpendicular to the direction of displacement. Therefore, it does no work on the, on the box. So zero joules of work there. If you look at that uh, force, it's uh, parallel to the direction uh, of, um, of motion. And it's also uh, acting in the same direction. So we would say eight times five. Uh, and we'll get 40. And we have another force which is acting downwards. Again, it's perpendicular 
to displacement therefore it does not work zero joules and uh, we have this force which is acting in the opposite direction it's parallel to the movement of uh, uh, our box however it's acting in the opposite direction though so would say for the five meters uh, uh, during which uh, it's going to be acting it's going to do negative work which is three times five newtons so negative 15 joules so what is the total work done it's going to be 25 if we add all those uh, individual forces and the work they do on the box so another way of looking at this is to simply subtract the forces uh, 8 minus 3 newtons and you get a resultant force of 5 newtons and you say this is the force that is going to be uh, pushing the box for the 5 meters and so you get 5 times 5 which gives you again 25 joules so let's look at another example a person pulls a 10 kilogram box uh, 10 meters along a horizontal floor with a rope that applies 100 newtons angled up at 30 degrees if the coefficient of friction between the floor and the box is 0.5 what work is done number one by the rope number two by gravity and number three in total on the box so let's look at this problem let's draw the forces that are acting on the box so we are told that uh, the box is, is being pulled by a force of 400 newtons at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. And if you resolve your forces using trigonometry there, you're going to realize that the horizontal component is 86.6 and your vertical component is 50 newtons. We also know that uh, there's a force of gravity which is acting downwards. So F is got MA from uh, Newton's second law and we have our 98 newtons which is acting perpendicular uh, in that direction so we also know that there's another force which is acting upwards however we are not told that the box is moving up or down it's not bouncing it doesn't have a, a vertical um, uh, movement therefore uh, it should surface that uh, the force of gravity plus the force that's going up there the normal force uh, should add, add up to zero so let's see here uh, uh, you have your y components which are FTY, the tension uh, in the vertical direction, 50 newtons. You have your force of gravity acting in a negative direction there. Uh, and we are saying if we add all these forces together with the normal force that I've shown there, they're supposed to give you zero newtons because there is no movement that we're told of in that uh, along the y axis. So if I do uh, the math, I'll find that my normal force is 48 newtons. So we have a force of 48 newtons there due to the fact that we know that all the Y components are going to add up to zero. And uh, we are told that our coefficient of friction is 0 0.5. So you just say to find the force of friction, you just say the normal force times the coefficient of friction and in that case we get 24 newtons so we also have friction acting in the opposite direction to 86.6 newtons there so if we add up the x components now we have 86.6 and our negative 24 the friction and uh, that gives us uh, 62.4 newtons that are doing work on the box so the work done by the rope there is going to be equal to the 86.6 which is the horizontal component of the force that's applied uh, of 100 newtons times the distance that is moved. So this is the work done by the rope. So it is 86.6 times 10 newtons, which is 866. What is the work done by gravity? Gravity is acting at a 90 degree angle to our displacement. Therefore, it does no work uh, on that box. And what is the work done in total on the box? So here we know that we have our 86.6 newtons acting in the direction of the box and we have our 24 newtons which is acting in reverse. So if we subtract those two, we get our 62.4 uh, which is the resultant force times our 10 meters and we get our 624 joules. A person carries a 10 kilogram bag of groceries up a six meter high flight of stairs to their apartment. How much work do, do they do on the bag? How much work do they do on the bag? 
So this person is moving at constant velocity up the stairs. So if they are moving at constant velocity, then we know that uh, there is no acceleration. So the forces are balanced. So what forces do we have there as the person moves up? We have the force of gravity acting uh, downwards. So we must have another force that balances the force of gravity. This is actually the force applied by the person. Uh, and uh, this, is what, what, this is what results in our constant velocity as the person moves up the stairs. And we should know that this force is acting um, in parallel to the direction of motion or displacement. So it is the force that is, uh, so that is the force that we are concerned with. So we also have a, a, a horizontal component, however, it's acting perpendicular to the displacement, so it does not work. So we are not concerned with that, that zero joules of work. So our work done is going to be 98 newtons times the six. A person carries a 10 kilogram bag of groceries up a 10 meter long flight of stairs. Uh, that angle up at 30 degrees, how much work do they do? So this time we're told uh, the, the distance and we're also given a, an, an angle. So we must be able to resolve into the horizontal and vertical component. 10 cos 30 giving you 5. So we have 5 meters there uh, and our force is acting parallel to that. Um, so our work done is simply 98 by 5 meters and that gives you 490 joules.